Welcome to the Intimate Marriage Podcast, where I teach educated, successful couples how to have incredible, passionate relationships so that you can stop compromising and start feeling fully alive in your relationship. I'm Alexandra Stockwell, aka The Intimacy Doctor. I'm a physician, a relationship and intimacy coach, and I'm an intimate marriage expert. My husband and I have been married for 26 years. We have four children and full professional lives, and we've created an amazing marriage. I've shown hundreds of couples how to do so as well. So if you want to deepen your understanding of your own relationship and learn to access new heights of emotional, sensual, and erotic intimacy, you're in the right place. I will show you how. Now, let's dive in. Are you a regular listener? Have you heard the Intimate Marriage Podcast before? If this is your first time, I want to give you a warm welcome. This is a really great episode to start with. And if you're a regular listener, if you've heard all of my episodes or just some of them, I'm so glad you've come back for more. And I want to continue with something that I talked about last week. Last week, I told you I had something really special that I was going to share the details about today. So here we are. My signature program, The Aligned and Hot Marriage, is for the couple that loves one another, they're committed to one another, and they want to figure out how to have more emotional closeness and or more sensual passion, how to have more alignment and more heat in their marriage. I have run this program in many different ways. It actually started as a live group coaching program, but most recently, it's been an online program that you can go through at your own pace. You have access as long as the program is available. You can do one module at a time, as you and your partner desire. And that program is definitely available to you. The link is in the show notes. You can just go right over to Aligned and Hot Marriage and enroll. However, recently, I've had a few hundred people go through the program, and many of them have said that they love the program. It has been so impactful and they would really love some live coaching with me. They would really love me to bring my experience and attention and shine the light on their particular circumstances, challenges, and possibilities so that they can benefit from a very customized approach as they go through the Aligned and Hot Marriage program. And so my really exciting news today is that I have created an opportunity for you to do just that. It's called the Aligned and Hot Marriage Live Program, and we'll have weekly in-person calls. I'm going to say a lot more about that actually in another episode because I'm really excited to talk about the myth of mismatched libido today. However, if you don't want to wait for another episode, by all means, go to the show notes and go to the landing page where you'll find all of the details of how it start, how it's going to work when it starts. I'll tell you it starts in October. There are a finite number of slots because I want to be able to really give each couple the full attention that they desire and deserve and require in order to create the transformation you want. So if this is something that interests you, definitely check that out. Feel free to send me a message. You can DM me on Facebook or Instagram or go to my website, alexandrastockwell.com and fill out the contact page there. And I would be happy to answer your questions. And if it feels like a good fit for you and your partner to participate. I can't wait to see you 
transform, blossom, flourish, and feel so much more connected in just eight weeks. So again, if that is calling for you, if you've wanted an opportunity to work with me directly and my private coaching hasn't made sense for you because it is quite an investment, then this is for you. You're going to get so much from the Aligned and Hot Marriage Live program. And one of the ways that the Aligned and Hot Marriage Live program works is that I will help you see the places where you both have blind spots, where one of or both of you are compromising in a way that actually restricts the passion in your marriage. Because perhaps you've already heard me say this on other episodes, on other podcasts, but I really want to say it now, that compromise just leads to bland companionship. And if you want to be fully expressed, alive, passionate, engaged, enjoying an intimate marriage, it is essential to be uncompromising. And what I mean by that is not that you always get your own way. It's not that you are uncompromising in that you get to be a bully and it's just always exactly how you want it to be. No. What I mean is that with compromise, you hold back your desires, your dreams, your challenges. You hold back parts of your truth so that your partner is more comfortable. And when it comes to being uncompromising, you learn how to bring the whole truth of who you are to the relationship in a way that your partner can hear it. This is what the Aligned in Hot Marriage program is all about. And this is what the Aligned in Hot Marriage live program is all about with customized personal coaching. Now, let me tell you why I'm starting this episode talking about this. First of all, I am because I don't want to wait another second. I'm so excited to be opening enrollment to the Aligned in Hot Marriage live program and let you know as soon as it's open, and it is now. So if you're interested, go ahead and enroll or ask your questions right away. But also, what I've just said is really paving the way, creating the context to talk about libido. Because if you or your partner want way more sex than you're having, or if you feel like you're the one who has so much desire for sensual erotic intimacy and it just isn't as important for your partner and they say no and you feel rejected. Or maybe you're the other partner and you really care about having a good marriage, but in the end, sex just isn't that important to you? Or it's just complicated and not worth the trouble. If any of these things sound familiar, you may have concluded that you have a libido mismatch. This is also talked about in terms of a desire mismatch. Like one of the common question is, you know, are you the high desire partner or the low desire partner? Which of you has a higher libido than the other? I'm in all kinds of groups with only women physicians, with women from all walks of life and all kinds of orientations, with women who are largely coaches. In all the different groups that I am a part of, mostly I have to say on social media, and also within my personal friend circle, where I might be speaking with one person or a number of them, all women, when we're talking about the intimate aspects of a marriage, of a committed relationship, 
invariably, there's some version of this theme. We have a desire mismatch. We have a libido mismatch. You know, where is the female Viagra in order to help women increase their libido? Is there anything I can do to get my libido up? I used to love having sex with my husband, but since the kids were born, I just haven't been that into it. What can I do to get my libido up? I'm assuming that some version of this sounds familiar. And honestly, it would be extraordinarily rare. I don't know that it's been studied, but I would just be completely shocked if in every marriage there isn't at least a phase where some of what I'm talking about is relevant because it just is so impossible to imagine that two human beings would have the same amount of desire, the same energy, the same passion for sex, the same level of energy at the end of the day, or the same availability during the day to be able to have sex whenever both people want it and both be into it for decades to come. That's just not a likely scenario. So at some point, either right when the relationship starts or maybe after a few years together, maybe after 10 years together, after children have come, when work gets intense, when the pandemic hits, whatever the circumstances are, I just really want to establish that it is completely normal, familiar, and common to have a difference in desire for having sex. And when that happens, one of the most common things is to think, oh, there's a libido mismatch. In other words, one partner is wired to want sex more than the other. It's a physiological, hormonal issue. Maybe it's anatomical. But the point is that there's some kind of fundamental thing which influences libido that results in someone having more libido or less libido. And while I understand the convenience of talking it, about it that way, when we're talking about symptoms, let's say in an appointment with your doctor, it makes sense to talk about it that way. But in the context of relationship and intimacy coaching, I want to tell you that libido mismatch is just a myth. It's a complete fallacy. It's based on false information. It's like there are 15 things you need to consider. And when you only consider three, then you conclude that the issue is libido mismatch. But based on my clinical experience, my own 26-year marriage, and the hundreds and thousands of couples that I have coached, it just is not the reality. Because libido is not an inherent quality that exists independent of circumstances. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. My experience when I'm doing private relationship and intimacy coaching with a couple, and one of them wants sex a lot more than the other, and so they've both concluded that there is libido mismatch. When I, let's say it's the woman with less libido, although in my own clients, it's at least 50-50, if not the women more often want sex, and it seems like the man has low libido, but I'm just going to talk about it as though it's the woman, because it really doesn't matter which way I discuss it. It's a phenomenon is the same. Anyway, so let's say you're a woman and your husband wants to be having sex a lot more often than you do. My experience with my clients in that situation is that basically 
the woman isn't having the kind of sex that she wants, and that's why she doesn't want that much of it. When I teach her how to pay attention to her own body, how to be present to the sensations as they arise, how to feel full permission to make requests to be touched differently so that she enjoys it, how to make those requests so that her partner is glad to hear them and adjust rather than having their feelings hurt that they're not doing a good enough job. Like when you learn all of the different elements that go into creating a wonderful, erotic, intimate sexual experience, then sure enough, the gap in libido narrows, narrows and sometimes resolves because when she knows how to ask for what she wants and how to stay present and receive the sensations that are available and how to dial up her capacity for pleasure, of course she's going to want to experience more of that. Similarly for him, actually, I'll just say that my experience is that when a couple is committed to one another, they love one another, they plan to stay together, and the relationship looks pretty good on the outside, and she wants more intimacy than he is providing and interested in, more often than not, it's not actually that he has low libido. It's not actually that he's not interested in sex. It's far more common that he has performance anxiety, that he hasn't figured out how to love his woman by how he touches her. Yes, he can open his heart and love her that way. He can create a collaborative life with her. But when it comes to his sexual identity, his sexual skills, his response to her as a sexual being, he knows he hasn't cracked the code yet. He hasn't figured out how to invite her to open into more pleasure. He hasn't figured out how to stay present and make it fantastic whether or not he holds his erection. He hasn't figured out how to do all those things. And so the the pain, if you will, the hurt, the anguish of not having sex is far preferable to the devastating anguish of feeling inadequate, of feeling like he doesn't know how to give his woman what she's yearning for. So it's for this reason that I think libido mismatch is just a complete myth. It's an accurate description of what is happening but it is not an explanation of what is happening. It is not the root cause where the thing is to fix her libido or fix his libido. There are some very rare situations where, yeah, taking some testosterone can help or doing other things along those lines. But I personally would never go down that road until. I'd addressed some of the things that I'm about to say, and this is not an exhaustive list, but first of all, you need to be well-nourished by sleep in order to feel libido, in order to feel turn-on, in order to feel desire for sexual encounters. Why? Well, I mean, partly if you're tired, you don't feel like having sex, that should be pretty straightforward. But also if you're sleep deprived, it means that you're stressed, you have more cortisol in your system and you're operating in the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is the one that where we have 
fight, flight, freeze, or faint. It's our stress response. It's very important for survival. And it has no place in sensuality and sexuality, which is determined by the parasympathetic nervous system. Parasympathetic nervous system is one of relaxation and calm and thriving rather than surviving. So this is why if a man is obsessed with whether or not he can keep an erection, if he has performance anxiety, that is switching his system into the sympathetic nervous system arena and makes it more likely that his fears will come true. Anyway, you need enough sleep in order to have desire. You need less stress on a day-to-day basis in order to really have a lot of desire. So if you are overworked and then you come home and you need to take care of the kids, make dinner, clean up the house and get ready to have a short night and do it all over again, that is not the situation in which libido is going to rise and expand and thrive. So stress is a massive factor in determining libido. Another thing which is a massive factor is to understand the difference between intrinsic desire and responsive desire. When we talk about someone having high libido, we're talking about them having high intrinsic desire. In other words, desire that is inside them no matter what the situation is and where they are, as opposed to responsive desire, which is fundamentally a response to something in the environment. So if you don't have a lot of intrinsic desire or your partner doesn't for any number of reasons, consider how you can adjust the environment so that it generates, instigates responsive desire. And when I say how you can transform the environment, I mean maybe you make the bedroom beautiful with candles and flowers. Maybe that's what is is something that your partner responds to. Maybe it's music. Maybe it's you putting on some lingerie. Maybe it's sexting all day in advance. Maybe it's talking dirty. Maybe it's just hanging some handcuffs on the bedroom door. If you don't know what it is that's going to generate responsive desire in your partner, well, it is time to find out because that, again, is an incredibly effective way to resolve the libido mismatch because it is just a myth, meaning you're not committed to libido mismatch. If you have a difference in libido, let that inspire you to explore some of the things that I'm talking about. The one other thing which I referred to earlier is actually the quality of the sex that you're having. And very often, especially if you're a woman, if you have low libido, you probably don't know how you want to be touched. It's not something that you've explored enough to be able to guide your partner. And I have to say, I find this situation incredibly exciting because there are some very simple, delicious, enticing, straightforward ways to discover this, some of which you do on your own and some of which you do with your partner. And every single thing that I have talked about throughout this podcast episode is something that you can do at the pace that is right for you. 
There's no reason to force anything. There's no reason to become ambitious and figure this out and eliminate the difference in desire. No, that's not how this is going to work. My hope is that you take away from this episode the understanding that libido mismatch is a circumstance. It's a symptom which is present in epidemic proportions in couples everywhere. But it is not a root cause. It is not something that you are condemned to experiencing forevermore. The reason I'm calling it a myth is not because there isn't libido mismatch in any given moment. It's just that sometimes you and your partner have different moods. But it doesn't mean necessarily that you're not both capable of happiness, joy, sorrow, grief. As a human being, you have access to it. And as a human being, you have access to a lot more libido if you choose to make it important enough to put your attention on the different factors that are getting in the way of you feeling more desire. And likewise, if you have robust, healthy libido and you wish your partner had more, same thing. Learn how to put your attention on your partner in such a way that it is safe for your partner to feel more libido because being sensually intimate is going to feel better than the safety and comfort of just avoiding it because it doesn't work for you. So again, my hope in hearing all of this is that if you are navigating a desire mismatch or a libido mismatch, that you really think about it differently. And especially if you're the high desire partner, you don't look at your partner and think there's something wrong with him or her. Instead, put your motivation and creativity into figuring out what what does your partner need in order to love you in this way and be open to your love in the sensual realm. So that is definitely something that I hope you take away from this. And also, if this sounds enticing, if this sounds appealing, and you're not really sure how to navigate this yourself, please go to the show notes and click on the link and come find out about the Aligned and Hot Marriage Live program because we'll be going through the Aligned and Hot Marriage Live curriculum, but every couple will be able to get the coaching that they desire and need. And so if you want coaching on libido, well, it would be my pleasure to give it to you because I want you both to feel fulfilled, gratified, expanded, and energized through alignment in your relationship and heat in your relationship because it makes your relationship so much more beautiful and it will enhance every other part of your life as well. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with a friend and please leave a rating and a review. And if you're ready to deepen your relationship and create a truly intimate, delicious, and vibrant marriage, head over to the Work With Me page at alexandrastockwell.com and choose the program that's right for you.